<laughs> so on the other side of these double doors is a dog park that I made last uh, spring here. Got my Doberman Madonna with her puppies. <clears throat> so this 36 inch, see this French door here. Uh, the other, the other pane, the other side is out there. And uh, I took a dog door that I had made and I used to have it going out a window. And I made this door from some two by eights. They had nails and stuff in here. And I had to pull out all the nails. This, this used to be the roof for my chicken coop. And I ripped them down to uh, to certain size. And then I used uh, wood dowels and glue, put like three or four dowels in all the, in all the seams. And uh, had plexiglass left over from when I built the dog doors. So basically, needs to get painted still. Here's the dog park out here. Goes way up into the woods, way up there. I've got the brown paint to match, but uh, let me back up a little here. So that's what it looks like right now. I just put a coat of primer on it, but uh, decided to, to paint it later because I wanted to get the door up. As you can see, it's a dual flap door. So when you want to go in, you push it that way and then you want to come out they push it this way so you don't get air blowing in and uh, uh, cold air and drafts and all that works pretty well well hello let me start by saying this is not a tutorial on construction it's more a how I built a dog door and uh, basically I bought this three quarter inch plastic um, composite uh, PVC material and also bought a big sheet of plexiglass because it was just the most re uh, reasonable way to buy it. A um, couple of simple uh, situations is you want to measure from the edge of your saw blade over here to tooth to the edge of your fence and uh, well you can do that I'm not saying you want to you can do it however you like so basically I know the size I want to make this is going to be 29 and, and 5 eighths okay so I added an inch and a half so I came over here and just measured 31 and an eighth okay so I'm going to cut this four foot what's left of this four foot piece I'm going to cut this down and I'm going to put a straight edge I'm going to use that two by four there and I've got a couple of clamps the clamps are over here so I'm just going to go ahead and Put that on my marks clamp it down and cut it okay so you can see that little mark right there okay so my board is clamped right next to the mark it's an inch and a half farther that way than i want to cut also notice that i'm on top of a skid there and i'm on top of another skid there with a nice clean place for my saw blade to go between them okay Notice the nice, beautiful cut, nice and straight. The reason for the two skids or a gap is so that both pieces are supported flat and it doesn't put any kind of stress on the blade or on the piece where it's all hanging down, you know, on one end as you're cutting and want it to break or something like that. Something I haven't mentioned so far is that I bought a brand new blade that's meant for like plywood. It's uh, gonna be used to cut the plexiglass and it's being used to cut this plastic. You wanna have something that's got a fine tooth blade that's gonna cut it well. Now, I've cut the, the rough opening over here and I traced the inside measure of the opening that's on the house, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out here in a second. Notice the big opening's okay in the skid over here. So when I go and cut my lines, I'm gonna make sure that my saw blade is is set to the, to the right depth to just go through the material and it's gonna be unobstructed. I won't be cutting through nails or any wood. My piece is all cut in the corners. This little piece that came out here is going to be used, is gonna be used on the inside. That scab piece will be used to block off. So if you wanna close off the, the dog door, 
permanently so that the dogs can't get out or to keep intruders from coming in. That'll be, that'll be blocked. That'll be the piece to use later. When I was doing my math earlier, I, uh, I was wrong. I was adding three quarters of an inch instead of, I should be subtracting because I need, I need this border to be smaller than the glass, not bigger than the glass. So I'm glad I caught that before I cut anything. Okay. So basically I'm going to take 12 and seven eighths and subtract three quarters and I'm going to come up with 12 and an eighth. Okay. And I'm going to divide that by two because I'm going to, I've marked my center line and I'm going to come over here six and a sixteenth this way and six and a sixteenth this way. And also, uh, I'm going to do the same thing, uh, from the bottom. So I'll show that after it's laid out. One thing I do when, uh, I'm trying to measure from a line rather than having that end of the tape measure that's sticking out a quarter or three eighths of an inch. I start at like number 10 and then I just go over like I want six and a, and a sixteenth. So I just measured a sixteen and a sixteenth. Okay. So I verified I got 12 and an eighth by 17 and a half. I made the distance at the bottom the same as the sides. Okay. And I left more room at the top to accommodate for the hinge. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this piece with a circular saw as I did before, having room in the here for the blade, and then finishing out the corners with a hand saw. So the piece I just cut, that's going to be the outer frame. I'm going to cut my plexiglass using the same method I did to, to cut my plastic. As intended, my plexiglass is bigger than my frame by three eighths of an inch all the way around. Plexiglass centered on my outer frame and I trace all the way around it. Next, I'm gonna set my router to a depth, the thickness of the plexiglass and I'm going to router out this area all the way around so that it's, the glass will sit inside the frame beautiful. In this scenario, it's not critical that these lines be perfect. It's just going to create a good seal so long as it, the glass fits inside. So it better be a little bigger than too small. The glass fits perfectly right there. Next step is to mount the glass with hinges. Okay, well, I mounted uh, an extra hinge up here because I had a screw break. I just used screws on the other door I made. I use machine I use machine screws rather than wood screws, but I've got plenty of glass, so if I have a problem, um, I can deal with that later. Um, another thing is I put a magnet over on this side, over here at the bottom, with a catch. Once again, just use some screws to put the catch in. There's this catch over here. I'm going to go ahead and mount the door now. To ensure that my, my piece here fits flush up, I routed out the space where these hinges will mount. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the door. I'm going to mount this piece up here, going to mount the door, and it'll be done. Okay, so this is the final. Got a magnet over here. Keeps that closed. Got a magnet on the bottom. So the dogs, when the dogs come out, they lift both, they lift both of these, okay? And when they go in, they just use the glass. So here we go. Let's simulate the dog coming out. Let's simulate the dog going in. Beautiful. Here's the deal. Got these little steps over here. Come over here. I just, I put a magnet over here, a couple of magnets from some speakers, okay? Um, they were just recycled. And so basically, if I want to close off the inside, I can close it off right there. And when I flip it up, it just sticks right there. The dog comes over here, goes out, no big deal. The magnet shut it. 